Okay, welcome everyone. Um, I'm glad you are here. This is the Blaze Tots uh, parent training, and my name is Caroline Bell. Um, I'm the senior manager at Blaze Sports, and I'm also the director of our Blaze Tots um, initiative. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, in order for us to really talk about Blaze Tots, we need to define who Blaze Sports is. So Blaze Sports is a nonprofit in Atlanta. We are the legacy organization of the 96 Paralympic Games. Um, and these games were the first of its kind held in the United States to show the power of sport um, within Paralympic sport. And so for the past 25 years, we have been offering adaptive sports and wellness programming to children, youth, and veterans with physical disabilities. In 2019, we were able to launch the Blaze Tots Initiative through generous funding from the Georgia Department of Public Health um, with the aim of improving health outcomes and increasing access to physical activity for toddlers who are at risk for health disparities, uh, really with a focus in toddlers with disabilities. Um, and so and we'll talk about this more, but the great thing about Blaze Tots is we're really trying to educate the village. So we do education and hands-on programming, not just with um, our kids in preschool settings, but also with uh, parents, um, administrators, and teachers. So we have to define really the impact and why this was a need. Why did Georgia Department of Public Health think that um, there was a need for programs like Blaze Tots to be implemented? And that's really because there is um, a disproportionately amount of obesity and um, chronic health conditions among individuals in low income areas, as well as those with disabilities. And so obesity among children with disabilities is almost twice that of children without. Um, and so we know that the that obesity can lead to chronic health conditions as they age. Um, and so we want to try to lay a healthy foundation um, with this Blaze Tots curriculum to try to be preventative in some of those health disparities. And the reason we're doing this training is because parents are such a crucial model for healthy habits. Um, you are the really the first models for health that your children will see. And so we want to bring some more awareness about a healthy lifestyle and habits that we can introduce to our family. So first, what are the physical activity standards? Um, so as it stands with Georgia Shape, um, the CDC, um, Georgia Department of Public Health, any of those organizations have um, standardized uh, practices for physical activity. And so preschoolers should spend at least three hours per day doing a variety of structured and unstructured active play, right? And so that could be um, allowing them free play with toys, but that could also be a more structured activity like we'll talk about with Blaze Tots at Home activities that you can do. Uh, one hour of moderate to vigorous intensity um, of physical activity. And so I know that those are pretty large numbers, and I really don't want us to, to focus so much on how many hours or minutes per day your child are be, is being active. Um, at, this, at this stage, I want us to focus more on in movement and enjoyment. Um, now, it's important as parents for us to be aware of those standards, right? And so we have some general idea of how active they're being, uh, but don't let those numbers kind of overwhelm you. We want our children to build up great relationships with physical activity and healthy habits, and that's going to come first through enjoyment. Um, <clears throat> physical activity also provides um, opportunities to be socially and aware, and it builds self-esteem and confidence. Um, it's great for other skills like following directions and taking turns and really emotional intelligence as well, which we'll talk more about. So in Georgia, uh, we're really not meeting these physical activity standards, which is another reason why Blaze Tots was created. So one in eight preschoolers are obese. 
Um, and children who are overweight as preschoolers are five times more likely to be obese as adults. So again, we see that these early stages um, of, of childhood development are really crucial for long-term health through adulthood. And then this last bullet point says physical activity and employment. Um, I know where these are just preschoolers, you know, you may think, why am I talking about employment? But uh, research has found that um, individuals with disabilities who are more active are more likely to obtain a job and keep a job. So uh, what that looks like, some examples of that, um, if um, maybe there is an individual on the spectrum, um, they receive a job at a warehouse, for example, Amazon warehouse, right? There's a standard of weight that they must hold over their head to get that job. Um, and so if they're unable to hold 20 pounds or 50 pounds over their head, that could keep them from being employed. Um, we have worked with other groups and um, one particular example that stands out was there was a um, young adult that wanted to start a dog walking business and she was actually doing fairly well with this, um, but she was getting too fatigued to finish. Um, and so again, her physical activity, um, her health was impacting her ability to do her job. Um, and so this is pretty common among people with disabilities as they're more likely to, to end up having jobs sometimes that require um, uh, more physical activity. Okay, so our goals for this parent training. Parents, I, I, I get it. There are one million things that you guys are having to do. Um, and especially for my parents with children with disabilities, it can feel that's even a larger mental load and it can sometimes feel like there's so much that I should be doing. I don't want this training to be that. Um, I want to simply bring some awareness around healthy habits in your family and try to provide you with some simple and fun engaging activities that your child can do. Um, and at the end, we'll also provide some additional resources. So at Blaze Tots, we do use sport as our vehicle for physical activity for these reasons right here. Um, one, it offers a range of physical, emotional, and interpersonal benefits. Um, it, uh, children who play sports are more likely to be active adults. Again, so if we're talking about how to build up um, um, health habits through adulthood, it starts as when they're kids. And so um, introducing sports at a young age can really help with that. It's also an engaging and fun way to develop um, gross motor skills like running, jumping, catching, um, all of those things that that age group from two to six is really needing to work on. And it also can provide a sense of belonging um, and advances social skills, right? So having to follow directions and stand in line and take turns um, and figure out how to play um, with each other, getting past that parallel play, um, asking questions, may I have that ball, it's my turn, um, all of those things, encouraging our friends, right? Those are all really important skills and it can provide a sense of belonging. So Blaze Tots was not just created out of thin air. Uh, we do have theoretical uh, models that support what we do. And so one of these um, is the Spectrum of Opportunities model and also the Strength-Based model. So with the Spectrum of Opportunities model, this was developed from um, the CDC, and it essentially outlines what factors contribute to quality early childhood intervention and education. Um, and Blaze Tots is fulfilling these three sections of the Spectrum of Opportunities model. And so right now we are able to offer statewide technical assistance to um, preschool programs. And that's through private preschools, um, Georgia Head Start, Georgia Pre-K. Uh, we are able to um, provide resources on physical activity, inclusion, and nutrition education. The statewide recognition and intervention program, that is our flagships. And so that's where we're going into preschools and um, early childhood development centers, and we are providing a six-week physical activity program for them. 
and then professional development. So we do trainings like this one for parents, but we also train teachers and administrators on um, on physical activity and ways to be more inclusive in the classroom. And they can get CEUs for that. So we try to offer several continuing ed trainings for all of our teachers. Okay, and then the strength based approach. So um, this is a uh, model that I believe is really beneficial outside of what is cr the creation of Blaze Tots. It's something that we can use and apply um, as parents um, to with our own children. So um, the strength based approach focuses on what your child can do versus what they can't. We're going to build opportunities around those strengths versus weaknesses. And in return, this builds confidence and an improved relationship with our physical bodies. So what this means is simply with, with individuals with disabilities, there is a tendency for our society and other sectors that our child's working closely with, like the medical model and education model, that are really focusing on what your child can't do um, or trying to improve their limitations, right? So everything, when you think about it, ends up being very negative. Um, and so when um, your kids come to Blaze Tots, when we work with your children, we want to simply focus on what they are doing well. So, okay, they don't have full use of their lower body. That's okay. They have full use of their arms. So how can we include them in this, in this activity? Um, maybe they um, struggle with standing in line right so that would be more so what they can't do well we know that they do really well with one-on-one -on -one, uh, redirection um they do really well with standing in line for short periods so i'm going to bring them back to the line when there's only two people in front of them right so if we bring um, our children's strengths to the forefront um, it will improve their self-esteem um, and so we can be role models for really advocating and showcasing their strengths, especially for my kiddos that may have more barriers with that. Okay, so we'll get into some activities that you can do at home um, with minimal equipment that I do believe that your children will enjoy. Okay, so we um, have a track and field um, activity within the Blaze Tots curriculum. And so here are some things to kind of get your, your kids' heart rate moving. Um, one of them is hurdles. So in our track curriculum, we have plastic hurdles that they jump through, just like on this picture here. Um, obviously, you probably don't have those at home, and that's okay. Um, you can use those Amazon boxes that are piling up in your garage as hurdles. You can use water bottles. Um, you can use, um, you know, uh, pillows or whatever you may have that they can jump over, step over, they'll, they will enjoy that. Um, speed drills, so staggering those objects that I just named off and asking them to run and come back, make them different distances, maybe make them zigzag around them. Uh, the touch something game, so that's always kind of fun for parents because it requires very little of us other than sitting and telling them to run, touch something that is a certain color. So I would say, Sophia, run and touch something green. And she would run and then come back. Okay, run and touch something soft. Run and come back, right? Um, so they enjoy going to look for that thing. It's almost like I spy, but it's a little more physical. And then uh, music and movement. So um, we have created a um, active playlist and you can find it on Spotify and on YouTube and it's called Blaze Tots Active Songs. Um, and all of these songs are interactive and they um, are storytelling or they're prompting the child to do different movements. Um, and they are really fun. So my daughter is two, um, and we probably listen to a handful of these songs on this playlist every day. Um, there's one song on there called the Scarf Song, um, and it's all about moving a scarf around. You And we have used, like, dish towels instead of scarves because we didn't have scarves at the time. Right? So um, these are fun ways, and with that movement and music, there's really no wrong way to do it. It's about creative movement and play, which is so crucial for this age group. 
Okay, continuing on some activities that I hope you guys can take um, home with you here. So for our field events that we do, Blaze Todd's, here are some adaptations that we use. Um, for our disc, we usually use a Frisbee. Uh, for our javelin, we use a red solo cup and that ear to elbow. So they place it at their ear and then they extend their arm out and throw it. Uh, for a discus, you can do a tennis ball. Um, gymnastics is a wonderful activity to get your toddlers involved with. Um, because it's really focused on gross motor skill and body confidence, and um, it's great. And they tend to really enjoy the climbing and the jumping, right? So uh, for a balance beam, you can use a long piece of scotch tape or masking tape and put it on the ground and ask them to balance on that. Um, you can make it a little more difficult by placing things they have to step over on the balance beam. Um, like a bean bag or a stuffed animal, they have to step over that item on, but not fall off of their balance beam. We've also had um, preschoolers, we've asked them to balance things on their head while they're walking across the balance beam and they tend to enjoy that. So at home, this could be maybe a book um, or a pillow that they have to balance on their head. So some introductory tumbling skills that you can introduce to your children that require no equipment at all, and it's so fun. Um, one is the crayon roll, and so that's where they extend their arms over their head um, and they roll across the ground, kind of like they're going to roll into a burrito. Um, the tuck, that's just where you're sitting down. You bring your knees into your chest. Straddle, legs are out wide, you're um, in a seated position on the ground, and you place your hands um, in front of you, almost like a forward fold. And then side scale, your, your child standing up straight, and they just extend one leg out to the side. So they will get excited when they start to learn the terms of these, um, of these movements, and then you can say, let's do crayon roll, let's do tuck, let's do straddle, um, and they'll be excited to demonstrate those. And then dance, um, this age group tends to really enjoy dance. And so um, involve some creative movement. If you have, you know, ribbons or um, like I said, for a scarf, it could be a dish towel. Like how can they use different objects to dance? Can they dance with their stuffed animal? Um, all of that is great in finding um, songs that they enjoy. And then uh, drumming fitness is one that our preschoolers really enjoy. Um, and that is where we get them to get active by making a beat with their drumming sticks. So we've done like baby shark before and we put our drumming sticks above our head like it's a shark fin. Um, and so then they're hitting their sticks together and marching. They're squatting down. They're hitting the floor with their sticks. Um, they're doing over the rainbow, doing big reaches with their sticks. Um, all of that is a really fun, engaging way for them to get active. So obviously, if you're like me, you don't have rhythm sticks at home. So you can use plastic spoons. Um, you could use spoons in general. Um, your everyday silverware, if you wanted to. You could use um, um, paper towel rolls for them to use as drums. Um, straws, all of those things would work just fine. Okay, nutrition. So talking about nutrition education, I want to kind of um, lay some, the foundation of what I want to talk about with this section. So there's so much that we cannot control when it comes to nutrition. Um, you know, with food prices being as high as they are, um, many families struggle with food insecurity. Um, we can't always control what's on our plate, and that's okay. So what we can control is the environment of which we create for mealtimes to be. Um, and so we want to make mealtimes engaging and fun so that um, our children are more likely to um to one eat the food that they have but also see that as a time of um a way to connect with with you as a parent so um some things you can do for this is ask questions about their day um there's been a lot of studies that have shown that children or families that eat together those children have higher uh reported rates of um confidence 
Um, they tend to have better emotional um, intelligence. They have better communication skills, right? So all of those things, um, it's really beneficial outside of the table of uh, meal times. So some other things you can do with um, engaging your child with food, especially if it's a new food, is asking them questions about it. Is it a fruit? Is it a vegetable? Is it salty or is it sweet? Um, engage an interest in food, right? It doesn't always have to be finish your plate. It could just be let's talk about and get excited about food. Where does it come from? Um, and then if possible, can your child help prepare meals? Um, so tonight um, for dinner, we opened up for our vegetable. We opened up just a can of sweet peas. So I had my daughter um, uh, pour the, the peas into the pot. Um, and then I cut up a few little pieces of butter and I handed them to her and she threw them in the pot. I sprinkled some salt in her hand and I asked her to put the salt in the pot, right? She was excited after that at mealtime to try that food because I talked about, oh, it's so good. You cooked such good sweet peas, right? Um, so involving them in some meals can sometimes help. And then um, limiting screen time is going to help with uh, your children being focused on eating. And again, they can't receive the benefits of social connectedness and all the things that are happening at the table. You're trying to create a positive environment, right? If, you know, um, I don't know, Miss Rachel is on in the background, right? Um, and then books and songs. So there are some fun books that you can um, reference for food. Um, you know, The Very Hungry Pat Caterpillar is one. Um, we also, there's songs about food all the time, like apples and bananas. Um, we sing a song about bananas and um, all about the different ways you can eat bananas. Um, so you can kind of do a search on different songs related to that. Um, I have on, you know, plain pretend as well. So um, I just read a book about bunnies and we had carrots for dinner. So can we pretend to be bunnies and eat these carrots, right? So we have to get creative sometimes to get our toddlers to eat. But the goal is to remove the pressure and more so focus on the enjoyment, right? And the bonding between you and your child. Okay, so I just referenced some of this, kind of uh, the importance of eating together as a family. Um, families who eat together are more likely to eat healthier food. Um, they're more likely to have better self-esteem, communication skills, um, and to have reduced stress levels, right? So our kids experience stress throughout the day, just like we do. And so how can we help them de-stress at the end of the day through some positive experiences around meals? Okay, picky eating. So this can be really difficult and um, it can be very frustrating for families. I understand that, especially if you spent time making a meal. Um, and then there is also the worry about, well, is my child getting enough nutrition because they haven't eaten any protein in two weeks, right? I, I understand that. So here are just some helpful tips um, going into mealtime to remind yourself of. One is patience, okay? So it can take up to 10 times, 10 times, that's a lot, of introducing a new food for your child to try it, to just try it, right? So stay consistent, right? They may not eat it, but maybe on the 11th time, they could try it, right? And our job is to provide the food, and that's really all we can do in a lot of times, right? Um, don't get too stressed about how much they ate, all right? And then encourage, don't force. So when we uh, force our kids to eat everything on their plate, regardless if they liked it or not, um, what happens is they could start to associate negative feelings towards mealtimes. And that's only going to lead to more kind of power battles with food. Um, fight the urge to offer a special meal. And I know that's hard, right? But um, as a rule of thumb, aim to offer at least one food you know your child's eaten before. Um, so there should be on a plate some type of consistency. 
Um, not everything should be new. So you're just introducing one new thing at a time. Um, and as we talked about, again, trying to make mealtime as, um, as a bonding experience, good conversation um, versus what is how much food did my child eat at each mealtime. Okay, so here are just a couple of tips uh, for <clears throat> um, creating a healthy plate on a budget. So food prices are really high right now. Um, and so like I talked about, we can't always control what's on our plate. Uh, but here are some things for getting good nutrition in that's going to be cost effective. So one is uh, purchase frozen. Uh, fruits and veggies. They're going to be cheaper, um, and oftentimes they are just as nutritious. Um, for proteins, right now, beef is very expensive, right? Um, protein in general is is more expensive. So here are some options of proteins that are non-animal proteins that can be more affordable. Uh, beans are very cheap, and they are a great source of uh, vitamins and fiber. Um, canned tuna and salmon, um, both of those fresh are very expensive. There's nothing wrong with doing, you know, canned tuna patties or salmon patties. Um, tofu is usually pretty um, affordable. And something that I've done is I have um, like chopped that up very finely and mixed it in with rice. Um, and so my daughter really doesn't know the difference. You really can't taste it, uh, but she's still getting that protein. And then grains, um, thankfully, most grains are pretty inexpensive and you can buy them in bulk, which helps. Um, I know if you guys have an Aldi or um, nearby, they usually have pretty good deals on some on healthy foods as well. OK, so here are just a couple um, resources that I want to give you guys. Um, kind of moving forward. So um, when you come into issues with picky eating or trying to make a healthy plate on a budget, whatever it may be, these are some great res resources to refer to. Strong for Life is the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta um, initiative for obesity prevention and nutrition. Um, and they have lots of recipes and resources for families on their website. Um, and so does Health and Powers. They have um, some more uh, resources on physical activity, uh, but also on nutrition. Play sports. Obviously, we do have a toddler program. Um, we have an adaptive dance class. Um, we will have a parent toddler swim class in the summer. And then we also are working closely with early child care centers across the state on this initiative, um, trying to increase physical activity. And then Focus is another wonderful nonprofit in Atlanta, specifically working with those with intellectual developmental disabilities. Um, and they do have uh, support groups for parents. They have respites. They have summer camps. Um, and so if you're not plugged in with them, I would really encourage it. So moving forward from this webinar, um, these are some things I just want you guys to think about, right? Um, one, what are the biggest barriers to implementing um, healthy habits with your children? Um, and I'm sure many people will say time, um, and that's understandable. Um, but kind of think through some small ways that you can do that. Maybe um, taking a walk um, a couple times a week with your child or parking a little bit further away from the entry to the grocery store or taking the stairs when applicable, right? Just some simple ways like that absolutely counts. Um, I think it's also important to note that we truly can't be good role models for health unless we are taking care of ourselves. So our children are watching us. And so how are we also taking care of our physical and our mental health as well, right? That's equally important. And so think through what healthy habits would you like your child to, to observe from you? Maybe you do carve out time to walk while they're at soccer practice. Um, maybe you do take time to uh, receive mental health therapy and they're gonna notice those things. Or um, you take time to involve them in the kitchen helping cook, right? All of those things um, your child will notice. And so um, 
we know how much all of you love your children and we want them to have long and healthy lives. Um, and so that's kind of the role that we can play. The what's within our control um, is kind of the, the space we create at home for them um, to be healthy. So I hope this was helpful information for you all. Um, my name is Caroline Bell. Again, I'm the senior manager and uh, you can find any of our information at blazesports.org um, and click on the Blaze Tots tag. So thank you all for um, joining me tonight.